Hello everybody, and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. Very good pack to start, a couple different interesting options. We could just slam Time Spiral. Not really a card I loved at first pick, but it's an option. Like Mystical Tutor goes with Time Spiral as well. There's Teferi, which is a very powerful Planeswalker, of course. I love this card. Birds of Paradise is strong. I don't love first picking Mana Dorks in general, but one to add all the colors are much better. And then there's Windswept Teeth, which I think is probably the correct pick. Um, it just leaves us much more open. It's like good in red and six decks. It's good in blue eye control. It's good in mono green. Um, yeah, I think we just gotta take the windswept teeth here. Everything else is like there's plenty of five and six mana cards to win the game. There's plenty of dorks. This is harder to replace. Okay, um, could take the stomp the ground here and lean towards some sort of red and six strategy. If we take into fairy, we would take wrath of god. If we had taken Time Spiral, we would take Time Twister. Um, if we had taken Birds of Paradise, I guess Sylvan Carry added reluctantly. Karn is decent, Through the Breach is decent, but yeah, I'll take the Stomping Ground here. Uh, okay, I'm a little tempted to just go Jund. I love Jund. It's not good, but it's really fun. Um, could also take Zealous Conscript or Primeval Titan. There's a Crater Hoof, but... Yeah, I, I don't think I can resist the urge to Jund here. Yeah, we'll take the Overgrown Tomb. So, this is a, I mean, in this sort of deck, oh my gosh, all right, we're in, we're doing it. We're gonna wheel Vraska. Faithless Looting is good, Utopia Sprawl is good, but yeah, we'll take the Red and Six. We have Windswept Teeth Stomping Ground. Um, this is great. I think is pretty likely to come around, especially since we just got an Overgrown Tomb. Um, maybe we could wield the Crucible if we're really in on land shenanigans. There's also Utopia Sprawl, which is very good, but let's take the Rend. Alright, pretty good pack here. There's Zyator's Proven Ground, which could be a good land for us. Also Escape to the Wild, but I think I'm going to take the Colagun's Command. Colagun's Command is really, really good. We already have a fetchable black land that we can find with the Windswept Heath. Uh, yeah, I think this card is just worth taking here. Hopefully one of these two cards comes around. Okay, um, I think it's Rabble Master here. Fiend Artisan is not that good. Asika's Chariot is kind of interesting. But I think I would rather just have the Rabble Master here, keep the curve down, the powerful proactive threat. Okay, a few options here. Orcish Lumberjack is one. But this doesn't really look like the kind of deck, like... You want a higher curve there, like more fours and fives for that. I think I like just taking the Blooming Marsh. Although maybe that's not right. Maybe we... Uh, no, let's take the Lumberjack. Yeah, let's take the Lumberjack. Very, very high explosive potential. It's not amazing yet. Like, I guess turn two Ravel Master is fine, but not amazing at the cost of a forest. But there's a lot more cards we could get that would make the Lumberjack good. And we have Red and Six to rebuy the lands that we're sacking. And in general... Especially if you're not playing a deck that has like lots of counter magic, you won't have the potential to be able to do broken things, and Orcish Lumberjack gives us that potential. Alright, Late Tiger is pretty perfect. Tireless Tracker would probably be playable too, but or it would definitely be playable, but we'll take the Taiga. That's a good pickup. Now we see Assassin's Trophy, which I'll take over the Eternal Witness. We're jending, baby. Um all of these three cards are kind of weak. I guess I'll take the Sylvan. No, no, I'll take the Freebooter, I guess. Mm. These cards are all pretty bad, but I think having access to this card is good. I'm not thrilled about main decking it, but it's fine. Now I'll take Noxious Gear Hulk. Nice, the Vraska Wield, no surprise there, but still happy to see it. Nothing here is really good for us. Um, I guess I'll take Zoran Orb. Fiend Artisan may be playable. And last pick, Jesk as well, okay. I love the start. I don't think it's the most powerful necessarily, but it's definitely fun. And here there's just like Teferi, which is way better than all of these things, but I think we're gonna take the Verdant. Mind Twist is good too, it's good with Lumberjack in particular, but 
I think we need to have some fetch lands if we're in our Ren and Six deck. And Mind Twist is, like, if we had a bunch of dorks, that would be one thing, but we only have one Accelerant. This card's not that good if you're just, like, playing it for three on turn four. Yeah, let's take the Verdant Catacombs. There's Croakta. That's good. Uh, there's also Burst Lightning. Burst Lightning won't wheel. Croakta is more likely to wheel, but it's also more important for the deck. And it's also just, like, kind of too on theme for me to pass. <laughs> I know that's not the best reason, but I just, like, I love having a lot of gold cards. And we saw Super Late... Uh, like uh, Golgari stuff, but we didn't see Super Late Racto stuff. So I think I'm gonna make sure we get this and take the Crocs here. Okay, a few options here. There's a Bayou. There's, I wish we could play Mana Leak, but we can't. But Seiju is pretty interesting. It's good with Renin Six. And then there's Marsh Flats. Which right now gets only Overgrown Tomb. Does not get red yet, but it probably will by the end of the draft. There's also Pest Infestation. Hmm, interesting situation. Maybe we are just supposed to take Vaseju if we have Ren and Six already. No, I'm gonna take the fetch. Yeah, fetch lines are just like so so important for these sorts of decks. All right, what do we have here? It's worth noting that our get our fixing is getting to the point where we can start splash other colors too. I'm not gonna take the Uro here, but like if we got a blue fetchable land, we could play it pretty easily. I think I'm going to take the Knight's Whisper here. We don't have, like, in general, Jund doesn't have good access to card draw. We don't have much removal either yet, so the Incinerate's nice for that, but I think it'll be easier to find this sort of effect later than just raw card draw. Yeah, I'll take this and then try to wheel, like, Mastery, maybe Questing Beast. Qu Actually, Questing Beast is very good, but I think I'm still taking the Knight's Whisper. Uh... Is Questing Beast actually that good? Maybe it is that good. Yeah, you know what? Let's take this. It's rare that I play a deck that's really built for Questing Beast, but I think this is one of the one of the cases where it is. Okay, a couple dragons here. Dak Faden if we want to splash blue. I think we just take the snuff out though. This is really good. Zero mana removal spells are very powerful. Okay, now we see Blood Chief's Thirst. Versus Chain Lightning. I think they're both better than these two green cards. Um, hmm, which one of these is better? Probably Chain Lightning. Yeah, I'll take the Chain Lightning. Close pick. Reason being, there's first, of all, well, a few things. First of all, Chain Lightning hits a decent number of three drops that Blood Chief's Thirst doesn't, like Goblin Ravel Master. And second of all, we don't have a lot of burn. Like, our removal typically actually doesn't care about toughness. Like, Noxious Gear Hulk, Snuff Out. Um, if we already had a bunch of burn, I would definitely take the Blood Chief's Thirst. But I think in this situation, this is fine. The one counterpoint is that Blood Chief's Thirst can hit Planeswalkers, which our other things can't. But we just took Questing Beast, which deals with Planeswalkers well. And Assassin's Trophy also does. And kind of Raska. So, I think it's alright. Alright, interesting pick here. We could take the Underground Sea if we want to open up a potential blue splash. We could also take Dragon's Raid Channeler if we think we have enough non-creatures for that, or Fatal Push. I think I'm going to take the Underground Sea, though. Yeah, I'll take this. With Triple Fetch, I think that's worth it. I mean, DRC is good, but we don't have that many card types at the moment. We don't have, like, Mishra's Bobble. And we have enough removal. I don't think we need to push. Yeah, I'm going to speculate on the Underground Sea. We might not end up playing it, but if we end up seeing, like, Time Walker Ancestral Recall, we'll really want to have this. And now we get an easy Raging Ravine. That's a great pickup. Okay, perfect. I think that we do actually take the Fact of Fiction here. Shark Typhoon's fine, too, but we really want card draw. We didn't take the uh, Knight's Whisper, and this also fills a graveyard for Kroxa. We have three free black sor th uh, three free blue sources right now, and we'll likely get some more. Okay, I'll take the burst lightning now. Could try to splash white as well, but I don't want to go too crazy with the mana base. Nice spy you on the wheel. There's also dark Swing shores and pest infestation, which are both good, but I think I'm still taking the bayou here.
Yeah, we're going to have plenty of playables. I'm going to have perfect mana. All right, there's Incinerate. We got a couple burn spells, so I'm kind of regretting the Chain Lightning over Blood Chief's Thirst pick, but it's fine. Omnath, I think, is a little too tough on the mana since we need white as well. We'll take the Incinerate. There's Dak. Nice. Great late pickup. All right, so we're playing Blue Jund. Good pack here. Another fetch land. There's Jace, but double blue is a little tough. Thoughtseize and Sylvan are both good too. I think I'm gonna take the Thoughtseize. I love fetch lands, but first of all, I can't even find the Underground Sea. And second of all, like we have three fetches for Ren already. I wanna have some more premium disruption. There's him to Torok. That's a little tough on the mana, but it's very good. I think that's worth taking here, actually. It might not be a turn two play every game, but it's a really, really powerful card. Now we see a, another good pack for us. Orcish Bowmasters is a, a premium creature. They got Triome is a good land that is three of our colors, so it makes Marsh Flats get black. I mean, uh, Windswept Teeth get black. And blue. Also spell pierce. I think I like taking the triome though. Maybe I'm underrating Orcish Bowmasters though. Yeah, actually let's take the orc. I think it's very good. We'll take the bowmaster. Now we see nothing too good, but I think we'll take Murderous Rider over Pia and Kieran Alar. Solid pickup. So we're definitely base black red with a little bit of a blue and a little bit of a green splash. All right, here we have Prismatic Vista as a sort of off brand fetch land. Probably worth playing still. Elvish Mystic isn't really what this deck is looking for. Honestly, the Orcish Lumberjack isn't either, but I think I will still play it. Yeah, I'll take the Vista. Ooh, Fiery Confluence. That's nice. There's also Waterlogged Grove, but I think Confluence is better here. And actually, now I'm beginning to be happy we took the Burn again, because we're getting to the point where we just have a lot, like, three or Chain Lightning, Burst Lightning, Incinerate, Fiery Confluence, Colgon's Command, Ren and Six, and Croakshell to some extent, Bow Bowmasters, lots of Burn, so we can just, like, randomly burn them out some games. Ooh, now we see a Leovold. Yeah, we can play this. Nice. Kind of wish we'd taken the Zagoth Triome with the way things are shaping up, but it might wheel. Or we could still get another land that lets us do that. Um, this is probably a 17 lander, so we need two more spells. Uh, Inferno Titan's good, but I think Fire Covenant's better. This card is quite strong. It's like basically three mana instant speed board sweeper, but like one sided board sweeper. Lurus is kind of interesting. We'd have to cut seven cards. Yeah, I don't think we can make that happen. Yeah, I'll take the Fire Covenant. Ooh, Nurturing Peatland. A Braid's good too, but we'll take the Peatland. That's a really nice land with Ren and Six. Elvis Reclaimer. Is that good? Not really. We only have one value land, and that's Raging Ravine. We don't have Wasteland or Strip Mine. Manamorphose doesn't really do much. It helps with the fixing a bit, and it fills the graveyard for Kroxa. I think I'd rather just take Graveyard Trespasser for the board, honestly. There's also Echo of Eons, a pair of Leovold, but I think that's going a little too deep. Yeah, I'll take this as a sideboard card. Um, Jadar is pretty bad. Ren and Runbreaker is... Fine, I guess. Yeah, we have enough burn. I don't really want to burn spell that won't go to the face. We'll take the Ren here. Titania is good with all these fetch lands. That's a nice pickup. Mind Clap, good sideboard card. Raids, Season Song. Okay. Let's move Noxious Gear Hulk to the board. It's just a little too expensive. Um, and then, yeah, I think I'd run it like this. This deck seems pretty sweet. It's, like, kind of aggressive, but it has some staying power as well. Lots of good interaction. So, 
We're base red, it looks like. 10 red cards. Huh? 10 red, 11 black. Two blue. Or no, three blue. Seven green. So base black, red. If we did this, that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten black. That's solid. Him to could be a little tough, but I think that's okay. Ten black. For red, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seems fine. For green, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's more than we need, but if we cut the forest, it will put us down two green sources. Um, maybe that's okay though. And then for blue, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, or only five. Yeah, let's cut this for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten black. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine red. All right, I'll add one more mountain. And we'll run it like this. This deck is very sweet. Play in some Jund. Like, mostly Jund. Uh, see you in round one. All right, here we are for round one on the play against Austin Floyd. This hand is great. We'll keep. Turn one Thoughtseize, turn two Bowmasters, probably. This does mean we can't play Random Six on turn two, but that's all right. Hmm, okay, Magda's not going to be a problem. I think we want to take the Sylvan Library here. Yeah, I'll take the library and pass. I guess Bowmasters is good against the library too. Maybe we're supposed to take Garrick there. All right, we'll pass back. Lumberjack, not looking great here. Maybe this shouldn't even be in the deck. It's a little bit close, but I don't know. They play Mountain Magda, presumably. And this is just such a good exchange for us. There's the red and six. Fine. We'll hit them for two and pass, and the next turn we can get red and six going. Oh, they missed their land drop. Okay. So let's go. Red, green, red and six. I can't get another red source with this marsh flats, unfortunately. I don't even think this, yeah, this just can't get red, actually. Um, so no croaks of this turn, but that's all right. Opponent is probably nearing scoop territory. We want to make sure that we get them low enough that they can't channel Ulamog us. All right, let's keep on bringing this back. Put Croaks into the yard. Which doesn't really do anything here, since they have tons of cards that don't do anything. But I think it is still worth playing. All right, Willow Log is gone. Put them for two and pass. There's an argument to playing Orcish Lumberjack over Croaksa there so that we can start animating Raging Ravine earlier. Maybe that's better, actually. It's kind of close. They do hit another land there. We'll grab another Swamp. I will keep playing this. There's also an argument to just holding one of these lands so that we can have more stuff for the Ren Ultimate, but I think putting more lands in play is actually valuable here. We'll pass. Next turn we can finally start animating Raging Ravine.
order of autumn. That's fine. Looks like they don't get a land off the top. All right, so let's go green and then sacrifice this for triple red. We'll bring back the bayou. Play the bayou. Incinerate this. Actually, wait, are they just dead? Questing beast. Raging Ravine, snuff out, and then attack for four, eight, this puts them to one. So I guess we could have won if we had um, used Ren and Six to minus, but I mean, it doesn't matter. We win from this position quite easily. They're at one. They can't draw extra cards. We have Incinerate and Ren and Six ready to just deal them direct damage. So, all right, playing against mostly mono green, it looks like. They, I mean, they have some random lands, but they're a lot of green cards. Mine Collapse is one option. Noxious Gear Hulk also seems decent. What do we not want? I think Rabble Master on the draw is not really where we want to be, and Orcish Bowmaster or Lumberjack are just kind of bad in the deck. Yeah, I think this seems like a better way to build it. All right, we'll submit like this. Graveyard Trespasser and Kitesail Freebooter both still seem not necessary. Mm, the mana is kind of awkward here. I think we can do better. Oh, the mana is very awkward here. All right, finally we get some fetch lands. We can definitely keep this. Um, we should put back one of the four drops. I think I'll put back Fiery Confluence and Bayou here. Could put back the second four drop, but no, I think we'll do this. We can get red, green plus blue, black potentially. Sylvan Library, that's annoying. So, yeah, we'll get Stomping Ground here. And then, if we could get Blue Black, it turns us off of Ren and Six. So it depends on what we draw. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna, well. No, I'll get the Bayou here. We don't have that much blue. And Ren and Six would be, like, the best draw in our deck. Sylvan Library is good here, though. It's very, very good in this sort of game. Both players are on a mulligan. We're playing cards like Kroxa. Sylvan Library can just draw them, like, four cards. Given the way this is developed, I, of course, wish that I had... Like, these three were all in our opening hand. We just drew back-to-back non-land, so I wish that I had kept another land. All right, we'll just burst lightning this. Best draw would still be Ren. Oof. All right, just sitting back, hoping to draw lands. This is one problem with having kept both fetch lands too. We took two lands out of our deck, so we only have 13 remaining instead of 15. Scavenging ooze, that's annoying. There goes our Croxa. Yep. <laughs> okay, I think I will snuff this out now just to prevent more life gain. Life gain is actually relevant when they have 
Still have the library going. Now we're one land away from Braska. We're getting close. Auger bottom plus seven library is good value. Come on, land. Nice. All right, I care more about the seven library, but I still think we should kill the auger. I don't really want to kill the library and then just let them keep the auger going. Or kill our Vraska and then like keep this going. So we're hoping to draw, or I mean, yeah, in two turns we can take out the, the seven library. They should be just paying way more life though. They should pay probably eight life here. Although I guess maybe against the deck with burn going down to nine is a little bit risky. Titanium plus Vraska is kind of cool. Attack the land, make a 5-3. If we draw land, we can play Titania, bring back a fetch land, crack it, make a 5-3, plus Vraska, make a second 5-3. Okay, Garrick is fine. If we draw an untapped land, we're still, we're way ahead. And I actually think all of our lands other than Raging Ravine are untapped. Brennan 6, okay. All right, I'll pass back. They can kill our Vraska, but then we can play Titania and start going off. Opponent well, goes to thirteen. All right, we can get our we can get our second red source for this windswept teeth. Uh-oh. Expensive card coming in. Through the breach. All right. Well, they might just have the combo kill here for World Spine Worm. Yep, that's GG. All right. It's good to know about this combo. Do we want to make any changes on the play? Ravel Master seems better again. Yeah, Ravel Master over Gear Hulk. We'll keep the curve down a bit, and we'll run it like this. And hopefully not Mulligan to five again. Thoughtseize into him to Torok, into anything. Okay, it's not that, but I will keep this. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's pretty. We need to draw a land for it to do anything, but we will keep. I actually think I'm not even cracking this Verdant Catacombs here since we don't know exactly what we want to get yet. All right, pass back. Pretty awkward. Yep. Land, come on. So we need to get a black source. We don't have a black red land, unfortunately. Uh, so we're just gonna get Bayou. Well, no, I get the Underground Sea. It means we can't cast Ren, but it means any land we draw gives us Dak Faden. I'm not gonna mind collapse to kill the Augur of Autumn, of course. Like. I don't want them to get any free lands off of it, but I can't afford to go down to one land. So we'll take the two, and then really hope to draw land. Although I think we're actually playing him to Torlock, even if we draw land. Ugh. Okay. 
I'm gonna leave the orc back to block and try to burst lightning the auger, assuming they attack again, which they probably will. This mine collapse is looking pretty awkward. Maybe that should just. I mean, I obviously wish it was a land right now. It could also be a lumberjack. I don't know if that's better or worse. Come on, land off the top. There's a scavenging ooze, okay, that's fine. They're growing their scoos. Minecraft will still deal with it for a while though. Nice. So, I think I'm gonna play him to Torok first here. All right, World Spun Worm and Thrun, that's fine. I'm gonna pass back. I'm still not gonna mind collapse this. Um, I'm hoping to draw another land for Vraska. I also don't wanna Assassin's Trophy this, but we can if we have to. Do we throw this Orcish Bowmaster under the bus? No. Oh, interesting. We could actually DAC fade in targeting them if we want to trigger the Bowmaster twice. It's kind of interesting. But I'm, I'm just going to take this for sure. I just don't love that, I'm, that that would be giving them card selection, of course. Leovold. Interesting. Okay, we'll play Leovold. I think I'm now getting to a point where I actually will jump block this scavenging ooze. I don't want to take five. Could also still mine collapse it, but again, I just don't want to go that low on land. And I also don't want to lose the only red source. All right, so they choose to grow their thing a bit, then go after our graveyard. It's fine. can't afford to take one more hit. Of course, they could also just throw the breach combo kill us here. That's always a risk when you're playing Vintage Cube. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one more hit because what we can do now is we can DAC fade in targeting them. And then they'll draw one card and discard two and we'll get to do the Bowmaster trigger. Or we could draw a land, then I'll just Vraska. Okay, they're killing our Leovold. That's fine. There's our land. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm going to play the mountain here and then just play Vraska. this and I'm actually gonna leave this back to no no let's attack I was thinking they could have Ragavan but they would have played Ragavan long ago we haven't seen it let's just if they have it they have it they can hit us once and the next turn I'm gonna start dacking them as weird as that may look eternal witness to bring back scavenging ooze That's fine. So yeah, let's go for this. Well, maybe not. How bad is it to let them loot twice? Kind of bad. I think it's worth it though. So let's go Dak Faden. Plus targeting them.
Then this lets us kill their scavengers and make a 2-2. And I'm just going to sacrifice the 2-2, I think, to um, draw a card. Could also sack a land at this point. No, I'm just going to sack the Orc Army. And we'll play this so that we're, we have Assassin's Trophy available in case they go for any shenanigans. Afraid, okay. Neither of my Planeswalkers will die here, so I'm okay with this attack. Okay, we're gonna have to pay some life here, but it's gonna be worth it. Oh, nice, now we don't even have to. So we'll go land, Titania. Plus this to sack the swamp. Back ourselves to discard some of these lands. And then pass. And their upkeep, crack these to get some uh, five threes. Oh, huh, we don't even have anything to get with that. That's fine. Elder Gargroth. Okay, we can kill that with Assassin's Trophy. Crack this. Also fail to find, I think, but then these guys won't be summoning sick. We're one mana short of being able to just kill them. Oh, we should be able to kill them now. So, let's go Vraska kill this. Black, green, trophy to kill this. And then chain lightning them for the last three points of damage. I will attack first, technically. I mean, if they have a bolt, they would have used it, but... Yeah, maybe this is slow rolling. I think it, it is the correct play, technically, but... Um, yeah, chain lightning you. GG. Interesting matchup. It was kind of a mirror. Huh, they're trying to shoot it back at us. All right, so, 1-0. Uh, oh, pretty good start. I'll see you in round two. All right, here we are for round two against DM Josh. We're on the draw, I mean on the play, and we have a great hand. No threats, but very disruptive and definitely a keep. Um, we want to get a red source for this, but we don't have a red black source. So I'm actually going to lead on Bayou um, so that we can play him to Rock on turn two, and then we'll just get Taiga on turn three with this. Hmm. Playing against a fan, that's always nice. All right, so we'll play our him. <laughs> There's the tiger that we would have fetched, all right. Robber of the Rich and Seasoned Pyromancer. Okay. So it looks like we're playing against Mono Red. Our hand has a lot of cards that pay life. This should still be a, a decent matchup, I would think. But you never know. Wasteland. All right. That is our only blue source in the deck, I believe. Maybe we have one more. Uh, oh, no, no. I do think we have one island. But... Uh, that will make casting our blue spell hard, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm happy to exchange lands when we're this flooded. Obviously, our opponent didn't know that we were holding all these lands in our hand. Yeah, we'll get stomping around. We have plenty of black here. 
All right, yeah, I'll fire that off. Whoa, that's a hand. A um, lot of burn spells. It's good to know about those. Let's take the Chandra. So they have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points of burn, potentially 11 points of burn. So we should be very cautious about using our Snuff Out and Fire Covenant. We need to find a threat. I think I'm gonna crack this in a turn just to thin the deck. I really don't wanna draw a basic island here. All right. Mana Screw versus Mana Flood. Usually Mana Flood wins that. Oh no. That's just gonna win the game on its own. I mean, we have answers. We have Raska, Assassin's Trophy, although I don't really want to use Assassin's Trophy here. But, yeah, this is bad. Dak Faden, good draw. We'll steal their Mox Emerald. They, of course, can hit, a, hit the deck with a burn spell and kill it now, but that's burn that's not going at our face. There's an argument to looting first, but I, just, I want to deny my opponent the mana. Now we'll see if they do go for the Burst Lightning. They might want to just save all their burn spells since they know that Sulfuric Vortex is hitting our life total down. This is the worst thing that we could have seen. Like, obviously, any creature we have answers to. All right. So, yeah, we need to top deck something. Croxa? Not exactly what I had in mind. Yeah, we're just going to get burned out very soon. Our opponent's going to deal all of their, just all their damage with, like, Sulfuric Vortex plus burn spells. Old school burn. All right. Gotta draw something soon. Questing beast. Oh. Pretty painful over here, just uh, playing land and dying sulfuric vortex. Down to eight, which is essentially one. There's factor fiction, but it's definitely too little too late. Okay, the Vraska kills their thing. We gotta take the, I think like, I, we pretty much take Vraska over everything here. We can almost burn them out. We could hit them for nine, then they would go down to three in their upkeep if we if they give us fire confluence plus a mountain. The croaks that we actively want to have in the yard, because we only have two red sources. But yeah, Vraska is the one we want to keep here because we need to kill the sulfuric vortex. Again, they have seven points of burn that we know about. We actually know their entire hand. Um, so we have to kill that sulfuric vortex, we're gonna lose. If we had drawn this, that pack of fiction a turn or two earlier, we would have easily won, but... Yeah, so this is a great split, honestly, because I'd honestly rather the, the Croaks would be in the top pile. Vraska alone would be a better pile than Vraska plus Croaksa. Okay, giving the mountain makes this worse now. Um, yeah, let's take the Vraska pile because we have to. All right, so kill this. They can put us to one. Um, we can close the game really quickly if they don't kill us right now. But Vraska does also represent some life gain. If they draw land, they could go, um, they can Fury. And if they draw not land, they can also actually Fury. But I will definitely start gaining life for the Vraska as soon as possible. Okay, Runaway Seamkin is fine. Are they going to kill the Vraska? All right, I'm just going to immediately gain life. Just put the life gain trigger on the stack. Um, 
Okay, let's croak so. I mean, this seems good. They can destroy the. They can still burn us down to two. But that would mean they're uh, hitting their. They're like messing up their mana development a decent amount. I don't think it matters too much what's in the graveyard. I'll keep at least one land. So are they going to discard one of their burn spells or just fire them both at our face right now? If they fire them both at our face, they're down to two lands, but they have a lot of draws that would just win. If they top deck another burn spell, or if they top deck like a goblin guide, that would kill us. Okay, incinerate the Vraska. It seems pretty, now they're just gonna fire off Fire Blast? No, they just discard the Fire Blast, okay. Yeah, it seems like now we're in a very good position. I'm not going to say it's over, but their window is narrowing because we can close the game really quickly. We can attack back for 13. We can actually just threaten lethal. And in fact, with the Fire Covenant, we have lethal. Whether or not we want to go for that, I'm not sure. Orcish Lumberjack. So let's go. Animate. I think I'm not going to try to go for the kill here just in case they have a way to kill the raging ravine and and there's like nothing that they could draw that would win if they um if they don't have anything so there's no reason to go for lethal here okay so we get game one against mono red um zoran orb is kind of interesting it would have been good there of course let's bring in the graveyard trespasser let's bring in noxious gear hulk i think we don't want questing beast um Thoughtsies is a little bit of a liability, but I think it's worth it. I'm still going to play Fire Covenant and Snuff Out. It's bad in that sort of matchup where they're just like, just trying to burn us out. But in most games, they're going to have a lot of creatures. Um... Hmm. I guess I'll cut Run and Realm Breaker. Just seems kind of low impact. And I'm not going to play the Zoran Orb. I think that's a little too cute. Hmm. All right. Well, it sounds close, but we don't, we can't get red mana with the Marsh Flats. If we find a red source, that sounds great. I think we can do better. Okay. Yeah, this seems better. We'll keep and put back the six drop. We have a cheap removal spell, and we have all our colors. I'm just going to play this tapped. If they play Robber of the Rich, I'll kind of wish that I had held up Burst Lightning, but we can just Burst Lightning it next turn. It's not that big of a difference. They do have the Robber of the Rich. Fair enough. Happy we're not drawing that Titania, that's for sure. I guess I'll hold off in case they have Rabble Master. Alright, we'll hit this. Then do we want to get a blue source? We could either get another, our second red or our first blue. I think with the fiery confluence in hand, I would rather get second red. Yeah, especially against this, we need fiery confluence to sweep their board. It also gives us our second green. Yeah, yeah, that's. But then we don't have double black actually. I really wish we had a triome here. Yeah, I guess I'll just hold this and not sacrifice it yet. I 
I actually think I'm just going to play Murderous Rider as a blocker here. Yeah, I think that is the play. Does mean that we cannot get... All right, uh, if we get Bayou, that gives a second green. Yeah, I think that's the right line. It's a good old 2-3 with lifelink. Worst vampire Nighthawk. Okay, I really hope they have like a glory bringer here and we get to take it out with snuff out. Thunder Mahal Kite, perfect. This is the power of snuff out. I mean, yeah, they get to hit us for four, but spending zero mana to trade with their five drop is such a blowout. Fire Covenant. Okay, let's attack. Okay, this is fine. Then we're going to go Fire Covenant, paying two life. So we gain life right back, kill the Pyromancer, pass back. We're running out of answers. I mean, yeah, we need now we have nothing left that we can do unless we draw a land. Hopefully there's Animating Mutavolt. Goblin Guide, okay. Come on, Guido, give us the land. Oh, they have another threat? Oh, okay, that's fine. If we find the land, any land would be fine. I mean, we only have one tapped land in the deck. We're Jack. All right, we'll pass. I mean, Lumberjack does give us access to six mana next turn, so we can play one of our four drops. I would so much rather just have a normal land, but Lumberjack is better than drawing, like, some other uncastable. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to play Questing Beast here, actually. I don't think they realize how this works. You can't block this with like anything, basically. Or <laughs> that, that, that's not true. You can't block it with small creatures. So Questing Beast is going to get in there. Put him down to 16. Um, haha. <laughs> Lots of mana flood over there for the opponent. Um, okay. So... We could sweep their board. I don't even think we care about that though. I think I'm just gonna play Braskin plus, sacking the Marsh Flats. We're approaching a point where we're in a nigh unlosable position. Um, Fire Confluence can burn them for, they're going to 12, Fire Confluence puts them to six. Looks like the opponent's conceding, all right. All right, two and oh, headed to the finals. Let's get that trophy. Numero six, to put us up tied for second. See you there. All right, here we are for the finals. On the draw, unfortunately, but with a keepable hand. 
Lance plus Ren. Not Ren and six, but still Ren. Playing against Colonnade. All right, good to know. Um, let's get this into play tapped and pass. This can get blue black. So I'm not gonna play that yet. I'm gonna probably do that on turn three. All right, we can kill that with the Fiery Confluence in a couple turns. Oh, there's our land, okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll just play this tapped. We can get a Bayou now with the Marsh Flats. What you got, opponent? Legacy Dan. Charter course, all right, that's fine. They discard a swamp and play a misty rainforest, so lots of colors over there. Thought seeds, interesting. Um hmm. it's much more mana efficient to go for the Ren, but they might have a counter spell. I think I'm actually gonna just fire off the Thought Seeds here. It's kinda close. But Ren and Realmbreaker are just a lot worse. Like if they played Fractured Identity or Big Teferi or something, that's way better. Although with against this hand, I kind of wish that I had just held. But um, I'll just take the Ledger Shredder. Don't really care about the rest of these things. That Colonnade will be a bit of a problem. Burst Lightning can deal with it though. So they could have gone land and then colonnade, but they choose not to do that. Snuff out, good draw. So now let's go for Ren and Realm Breaker. I think that's better than playing Questing Beast into their known snap and all that. So we're going to immediately minus two and hopefully get a, get a nice two for one out of this. Ooh, lots of gas. Um, Fraska or Dak? Which one is better? I think I'll take the Vraska here. Well, hmm. We have a lot of ways to deal with artifacts already. Yeah, I'm going to take the Vraska. It's close. And we'll pass back. And then if they go for the Colonnade kill on our Planeswalker, we can hit it with Snuff Out, and that will be a huge blowout. They could also just Blood Chief's Thirsted, but then we're getting a clean two for one, and we'll be in a very good position. All right, Mox. I really hope they're just going for Colonnade. All right, there's the Blood Chief's Thirst, fair enough. I think I will take this window to just blow up both of their artifacts. Destroy two artifacts, two damage each opponent. And now they're back down to three mana. They're not that close to doing anything too devastating. We still have a decent hand. Um, Questing Beast can start bringing the beats and we can back it up with seven points of burn. All right. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna put the Questing Beast here over Vraska. They, 
can snap this if they want to, but that's card advantage for us. Oh, mana drain. Huh. Okay. They're probably going for colonnade. We'll go for the snuff out. And in general, when your opponent has colonnade, or like, I guess technically any man land, vigilance. Uh, I, think, I don't know if there's other ones though. There probably are, but uh, you want to kill this before they declare it as an attacker because if they have a mana leak or something, you want them to tap the colonnade to cast the mana leak and then it won't be declared as an attacker, so you get to save the four life. Yep, it's fine. Snuff out's been great all league. And then we'll play the brass again, plus sucking a um, swamp, I think. They snap back their own thing, right. It's fine, we still have first light, need to deal with it. Holocron's Command, another good draw. We could bring back Questing Beast, but we can't play it, so let's just play this first. Well, plus, it's out of Colonnade range, sack a Swamp, draw a Swamp, okay. And pass, and then end of turn, we can go Holocron's Command to make them discard a card and bring back Questing Beast, unless they play something that changes that. Five mana, huh? Ooh. Okay. So this is gonna make them, oh, they don't, what? That's weird. Okay, so let's go. Colagon's command to kill one of them and, and bring back the questing beast. Good draw. Um, questing Beast. Swing on in. And I think I'm just going to sack another one of these things now. Put this up to eight loyalty. Orcish Bowmaster. Ah, I wish we had another black source, but that's fine. Looking good. They can animate the colonnade if they want to. I think it actually would have probably helped us if they had become the monarch for what it's worth. We would have gotten the monarchy back right now. And then I think we could protect it pretty easily with all these removal spells. It's really bad that this deck doesn't have one blood crypt. Like a black red fetchable land would go a long way. Oh, let's go to combat. They could go for the colonnade block. If they do that, then I'm going to fire covenant paying eight life to try and just sweep their board. All right. Boom, Fire Covenant, putting in some work here. 
They have force. Okay, they have no force, so this should basically seal the deal. Hmm. I'll respond to that a little bit. Um, okay, let's play main phase, Boatmaster, and then sack the token. And pass, and then they're going to be dead pretty soon here. Even if they sweep our board, we can like ultimate Nebraska. Okay, they Vampiric Tutor, interesting. For a board sweeper, I guess. Puts them down to six though, so they're just dead through our burn spells. Fourth Aerolingus. Such a weird card. Also the only card that I know of that has an exclamation point in its name. This card really good in the right setting. Sower of Temptation, okay. All right, nice. All right, playing against Esper Control, or like base, like a blue control deck that has the Airlings card. Uh, what do we want to change? Kite Self Rebooter seems decent. Graveyard Trespasser is a threat. We had a lot of burn there that we didn't really end up needing to use that much. I think I'm gonna bring in Freebooter over one of these burn spells. Although they do also have the Sower. Fire Covenant seems good. I think I'll cut Incinerate and then run it like this. Yeah, that seems fine. I think I, like Chain Lightning versus Incinerate is interesting. Obviously just Sorcery versus one extra mana. Um, we even have the Chain Lightning here. This hand's a mulligan though. This is worse than just like any land with Renin 6, any hand with Renin 6 rather. Okay, good hand, we'll keep this and put back Kroxa, I think. Yeah, I think these other cards are a bit better. Very good hand. So we need to get a blue source. Um, we can just go like Bayou plus Underground Sea. All right, all right, I guess we'll get over on Tomb just to take the tap land out of the deck. And all right, now I'll just play this and pass, holding up the Bowmaster. Bummer. That's the kind of card draw that does get around the Bowmaster, but that's fine. We're still, we're going to be ahead on board with a good hand. We do need to find another land, though. Get out there, Bowmasters. Boom, down to 19. Interesting. Is this a spot where I'm going to dack them? Honestly, yeah. It's kind of weird, but I think it is correct here. Hits them for four extra damage, adds two points of power. It does give them some card selection, but our hand's good. We don't even really want to dack ourselves. And we have a lot of burn in our hand, so just putting their life total lower is pretty nice. So these triggers put them to 17, and then we swing for four, put them, putting them to 13. We're holding potentially 12 points of burn in our hand.
Pick four. Legacy Den is on the back foot here. The old Dak Bowmaster combo. Okay, that's fine. They kill our Dak. We should probably just play Questing Beast. Could also Colagun's Command to kill this. I think I'd rather get the Questing Beast down though. And if they want to trade the orc for the questing beast or for the air tie, that's fine. Chump block the questing beast. Interesting. That could mean a board super's coming, which would still be fine. I mean, we have enough burn to kill them. We just need to find red mana. What you got? Toxic Deluge. All right, so they're just dead to the fiery confluence. We have to find a red source. We don't, so let's fire off a main phase, factor fiction. Bad if they have counterspell. Oh, bummer, they do. Reprieve, okay. Still a good position. They're, they have no board presence. If they tap out, they're pretty much dead. This needs to be something. Oh, go fourth air lens. Okay. Sure. I mean, they get hit us for. Hey, that's actually kind of scary. They get hit us for eight. We need to find a land. Man. Okay, I'm just going to chain lightning their face and play a blocker. We could play the factor fiction again, but then there's a risk of us just dying because they can attack us very low. This makes it harder for them to kill us. They need removal spell plus burn spell. Um, and we still are threatening lethal if we can resolve. I mean, I guess we need to land still, but like burst lightning as an instant speed kill spell as in kill target player is, um, is much better. Snap, okay. Do they have snap into burn spell? Wow, yeah, we die. That's kind of brutal. Very frustrating to lose th that game that way. I thought we were in a phenomenal position. Uh, we just needed more red mana. And yeah, that, that sucks. That was very frustrating. Especially since that was for the trophy. All right, for the trophy again on the play, do we want to bring Incinerate back in? Incinerate's good against that, that dragon card. Um... I'm gonna cut the lumberjack and run it back like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only have nine red sources. That has been a consistently problem. It sucks that Verdant Cat or that um Marsh Flats can't get red. I think it's fine though. We should be pretty favored in this matchup. We just need to have a functional draw, not miss a bunch of land drops. We get to be on the play. With the, that new 5-mana dragon plus the 4th Aerolingus card, Boros has some cards that really, like, some good cards, some good hasty mid-range threats that close the game quickly and are hard to answer well. All right, very good hand. We finally have Ren and 6 again. Ren and 6 Dak is also a really good combo. It's possible we could have won that game if we hadn't dak them. Hard to say.
Also, the tournament where we played Moon Phase Factor Fiction, they were able to reprieve. Maybe we're supposed to just pass there. We want to hit land drops, but I don't know. It's close. All right, what land do we want to get here? I think I will get... We need to get a green source, so it's Overgrown Tomb or Stomping Ground. I'm going to get the Tomb, and then we can get the Stomping Ground off of the... We can get Stomping Ground soon. So, green, red, Renin 6. Spell Pierce would be a disaster here. Force of Will would be fine. There's the force, all right. So wait, we don't have double red now. Maybe I fetched poorly. We got I got double black, but then of course we drew another black land anyways. I'm sad they don't have an artifact here. Yeah, this, we're getting max punished because this doesn't get um, a red source. We'll back ourselves looking for, or I mean, not looking for anything in particular, but we have some cards we don't want, especially this Marsh Flats. Um, I'm tempted to discard the Bayou. No, nah, I'll discard the Mountain. We want the second green source, I think. Since we have the Titania in our hand. Ooh, Crooks is a good one. Um, I'm actually not going to discard the Crooks because I think I want to attack their hand this turn. So let's discard these two. And go Crooks into Thoughtseize. So they have less information when they go for the Thoughtseize. Or they have less information when they decide what to discard. And we have more information when we go to our Thoughtseize. A land that doesn't hit them for three. Good value. And if they have Reprieve, oh, Ashen Rider, what? All right, we'll take the Iteration. Good position. Tar Pit was their draw, okay. If we draw a red source, uh, not the red source I was thinking of. Um, do I even want the DAC? I like my hand. I think I'm gonna Factor Fiction first. Is there any chance that's right? Cause this is like the perfect three cards. Yeah, I'm going to factor fix the main phase. It looks a little weird, but we know they don't have a counter. Um, and that means that we can just take like a card, like a pile that has a bunch of cards that we don't want, and then we can loot them away. Like, I'll pretty much just take the three pile no matter what it is, because none of these cards are that important. And, um, and then we can just loot. I guess him Torque probably is the best one of the lot. I don't know how they're using this Ashen Rider. We, I don't think we've seen anything for that yet. If their plan is to hardcast it, that's ambitious. Definitely yeah, just taking the top pile if they do this. Honestly, Cola Gun's Command is among the best cards here. Unfortunately, Snuff Out does not hit the Creeping Tar Pit, but I don't really care about the Tar Pit. We'll take this pile. Dak. We do want to... Oh, no. We have the second red in the Raging Ravine. Let's just discard... Actually, I'll discard the Snuff Out, honestly. Yeah, we'll discard those two. Play this. And pass. And then next turn, we can go Croaks up plus... Um, Orcish Bowmasters.
Yep. Are they going at Dak or at us? Dak, okay. Here, I'll Dak myself again. I'm not going to do the Dacking them plan right now when we know that their hand sucks. Okay, we'll just, just, just discard two lands. Crooks is out there. It's possible they have some reanimator sub themes, which means that putting us in the graveyard could actually help them, but I think we still want to just establish the threat. Maybe Titania is better though. Yeah, that might have actually been better. I like that this lets us also play the Bowmasters, but it's kind of close. Just pass. Interesting. All right, I'll down the Bowmaster. All right, we should start thinking about the corner case. Like, what beats us now? Ashen Rider doesn't really beat us, but that's one thing we should be aware of. Questing Beast is a good draw. Let's go to... Um, Talk to Deluge is a card that's fairly likely. I'm just going to go to combat and attack, honestly. We're going to hold all these things back. Just keep mana up, be able to call a guns command plus burst lightning. Killing Croxa. Okay. Okay, nice. I'm happy to draw that. Because now we can attack and, and still burst lighting this and still bring back Croxa. This is where you just see how good Croxa is. We can just keep on bringing it back. They can keep on killing it, but it will just hurt their life total, hit their hand. Should be a really good card. Doesn't really matter what's in our graveyard when Ren Six is gone. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Other than having creatures in the graveyard for Colgan's command, but we don't have any creatures either way. Do we want to mill our opponent for two? Nah, that could help them. Oh, we should have. We obviously should have with Bowmasters in play. Sorry about that. So we should be plusing Dak to target them. All right, let me take a look at their hand. Um, so if we go Cold Guns Command, shock them, make them discard that card, they go to 11, we plus Dak on them, they go to eight, they go to five off the trigger. I think that would put them to one. Um, okay, I'll still do it. So this way, um, I mean, they are going to get one card in their hand. I don't think there's anything that really hit, does it, though. Maybe we're supposed to just, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's game. All right, 
Sweet. So I probably could have been a little bit more accurate towards the end of that game. It's easy to get sloppy when you're very ahead. Um, all right, so good result for John. Uh, we got the trophy. It's not full John, but it's mostly John. Um, so a couple strong cards. Like the thought sees him to Torok, this card plan was good. Um, Orcish Bowmasters was very strong, in particular with Dak Faden, but just in general too. Uh, Croxa was really, really good. There was multiple games where it kind of won single-handedly. Renin 6 was also very good. Every game we had it on turn 2 on the play, it just felt like we were in such a good position. Um, Questing Beast and Titania were both good threats. Fire Covenant was good. A lot of cards performed pretty well. Um, Orcish Lumberjack seemed pretty bad. We actually, I don't think, used it a single time for value, maybe once. Um, but even in that time, it was like worse than a normal land. I think this card is still good, but this is not the deck for it. Like, this is a deck that's curving out of like 2, 3, 4. You want just like mana dorks for this sort of deck. But Orcish Lumberjack is really good when you have like fives. Um, so I'm not going to say it's bad, but this was not the right deck for it. Rabble Master also never really did much. We didn't draw it much, and we cut it a few times. It's the kind of card that's good when you're. When the board is clear, it pre pressures the opponent well, but when they have some board presence, it's not very impressive. Um, Snuff Out was also quite good, very consistently, just like zero mana kill something. Um, the mana base was n good, but not as good as it looks. Like Given that we had four fetch lands, it should, be, should have been even better, but we didn't have a single black-red fetchable land. We also didn't have a green, like a forest to find a prismatic vista. So obviously we could have played a forest, um, but... I think having the John Triome would have helped a lot. I forget what we passed for it, but at the time we were like, oh, we already have Bayou, we already have Stomping Ground, it doesn't really matter. We were just assuming we would get a Black Red Fetchable Land later, and we never did. So that's the one thing that would have really helped this deck a lot. But other than that, this deck was sweet. Um, good low curve, interactive. I love having lots of powerful gold cards, and just a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.